Hey, in this video, I'm gonna go over how I like to draw hands in an appealing way that I like, and how you can become comfortable with drawing hands and understand the form to be able to find your own style for drawing them. I found a lot of videos online kind of outlining a way to draw hands and saying this is the best, easiest way to draw hands, but I feel like it's kind of a band-aid solution. It shows you how to draw hands in a way that works, but maybe doesn't give you uh, a fundamental understanding of hands so you can draw them in all sorts of different ways and ultimately finding your own style for it. I'm definitely not a master of drawing hands yet, and probably never will be because they're extremely hard to draw, but there's something so magical about them. I saw a popular artist said, a viewer can ignore mastery of pretty much anything in the character drawing, but if the hands and face don't look believable, the whole piece won't be, and that kind of stuck with me. So today I'm gonna go over how I understand the form of the hands, which is kind of like the foundation of being able to draw hands comfortably. And then I'm gonna go over how I get better at understanding the anatomy of them, and then how I implement that into my own drawings. So quickly, just to show my understanding and the way I break down the hand in a simple way, I'm gonna quickly draw out the three parts that I simplify the hand into, which is the base of the hand or the palm, which is in red, the thumb that's in blue, and the fingers in green. Having a good understanding of the form of the hand allows you to understand what line decisions to make when actually drawing the hand. And there's no right or wrong decisions, it just depends on style and the way that you like to simplify it. If you want to show all sorts of detail, then you can. If you want to simplify it in a very stylized way, that's okay too. And so now that I'm going away from the base blocks and actually building out the hand, you can see that I'm putting contour lines just to indicate the 3D form. This is what I was talking about when I was talking about understanding the form of the hand. Knowing the fleshy parts and bony parts of the hand will make it a lot easier to make um, shape decisions when you're actually drawing it in different um, angles and stuff like that. Paying attention to these little nuances of, the, for example, right underneath the fingers, how there's a little bit of a, a curve, and then on both left and right side of the palm, there's those mounds of flesh. Just being aware of those little things really will help inform your drawings later on. And so here's some drawings I did. I color coded it to match up to the, the previous part. But this is basically just showing how if you understand the general masses of the hand, you can kind of gesture towards actual functionality and make a really believable hand without putting all sorts of different details. And so now I just wanna hop right into actually doing some draw over uh, studies. Usually I would actually not draw over them, I would just draw them on a separate piece of paper or a separate Photoshop file. But in this example, I wanted to really show my breakdown and understanding of the hand and how it correlates to actual hands in real life. So something that I really want to point out is how I'm really simplifying the shapes of the hand while also being loose and gestural with the foundations of my understanding of the hand, if that makes sense. So for example, the base isn't always just a cube or a square. It'll change and mold and, and shape differently depending on the, the position of the hand. And if you really just take a moment to look at your hand and flex it and move around your fingers and do different positions and flex your wrists and stuff like that, you can see that, yes, when it's in a base position, your palm kind of looks like a square, but when you put it in all sorts of different things, it can make a silhouette shape of something very far away from a square or from its base position. And so I think that's something that I took out of my studies recently is that the hand, just like the face and just like the body is very expressionistic. And so I think you wanna have that attention to gesture and attention to looseness. And I think a lot of maybe things you'd find on Pinterest or on YouTube that are showing this is how you draw a hand kind of is leading people astray as it did for me for a long time because it's just not, it's not that simple and there's a lot more to the hand than just the, the basics. That's why I'm, I'm showing the way that I draw a hand and the way that I understand it, but also going over how when I'm actually doing reference drawing, my base block out of the 3D form of the hand changes so much depending on the position. Personally, I like having actual concrete ways to improve at something, and I think that the most effective way to get better at drawing hands in particular, for me at least, is uh, drawing from reference and then using your newfound knowledge to draw from imagination. In general, this applies to like everything in art pretty much. You can study in many different ways, but fundamentally the main way you get better at anything really is to study it and then put it into practice. It's kind of the way a basketball player does shooting drills, dribbling drills, etc. 
but then we'll put it all together into practice in an actual game. So for studying, I like to use this website. I'll put it in the description. But you don't actually have to use a website, you can literally just use your other hand for reference. It's up to your preference. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Don't be intimidated to just start studying. If you really dedicate like a week, you'll get like honestly pretty comfortable. Honestly like a day, you'll get pretty comfortable with it. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment. I'll respond to all of them for sure. Thank you for watching. Peace.